It's 10 a.m. by the studio clock. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's take a look at the headlines this morning. Prime Minister departs for five-nation tour to Afghanistan, Qatar, Switzerland, US and Mexico. Special focus on push for India's NSG membership. Centre creates four categories of LPG dealers to effectively cater to varied needs. Process to appoint 10,000 dealerships under the unified guideline also begins. Several candidates elected unopposed to the Rajya Sabha Union Ministers Piyush Goyal and Suresh Prabhu and former Ministers P. Chidambaram and Praful Patel among those elected. France battles severe floods. River scene flows at over 30 year high, forcing thousands to be evacuated. And Leander Pays and Martina Hingis script history. Complete career mixed double slams with win at Roland Garo. In the singles, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray set up title clash. Serena Williams to take on Garbai and Muguruza for the honours. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set off on a five-nation tour to Afghanistan, Qatar, Switzerland, the United States and Mexico today morning. The focus of his visit will be to broaden India's trade, energy and security cooperation with these countries. There will also be a special focus on India's membership of the 48-member nuclear suppliers group. The Prime Minister will first travel to Afghanistan where he will inaugurate the Afghan-India Friendship Dam, earlier known as Salma Dam in Herat province. He will also hold talks with Afghan President Afshar Ghani on a range of issues including the current situation in his country. The Prime Minister will be leaving for Afghanistan tomorrow uh, where he would be inaugurating uh, along with uh, uh, President Karzai uh, sorry, President Ghani, the Afghan-India uh, Friendship Dam, uh, which was earlier called the Salma Dam. Uh, and uh, after the uh, inauguration, he and President Ghani would be, uh, there would be a lunch hosted by President Ghani. Uh, and uh, then uh, the Prime Minister would be going on uh, later in the evening to Qatar. From Afghanistan, the Prime Minister will travel to energy-rich Qatar and from there he will leave for a two-day visit to Switzerland on Sunday. In Switzerland, the Prime Minister is likely to seek the country's support for India's membership of the nuclear suppliers group. The black money issue is also likely to feature in the talks. We are in touch with the government of Switzerland uh, under the DTA mandate. Uh, and uh, we've had uh, some discussions about this and we do expect... Uh, we have a few more planned uh, in the near future. And there are some, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have received uh, support from Swiss authorities uh, uh, on exchange of uh, information on tax data between the two countries. From Switzerland, the Prime Minister travels to Washington on 6 June. In the U.S., Modi will become only the fifth Indian Prime Minister to address a joint session of the U.S. Congress. On 7 June, the Prime Minister is scheduled to meet President Obama. Talks between the two will cover the entire range of bilateral ties. President Obama uh, spoke to the Prime Minister and mentioned to him that uh, in, in uh, this year he was inviting uh, uh, some leaders with whom he had an, uh, ex you know, a very close and productive working relationship uh, to visit him. Uh, in the United States. So in many ways you can say it's a sort of a consolidation visit. In the US, the Prime Minister will also meet business leaders and address the US-India Business Council. His last stop will be Mexico where he will hold extensive talks with the Mexican President. India's membership bid at the NSG will figure in this too. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Defence Minister Manohar Parker is in Singapore for the crucial Shangri-La dialogue on intergovernmental security. Addressing the meet, Parker said that the rising defence expenses in the Asia-Pacific region is a cause of concern. He, however, said it was equally important to not ignore the sequ uh, security requirements of countries in the region. We are confronted with a new challenge. 
A broad look at trends in the region suggests that countries in the Asia-Pacific are spending more on defence. If you look at recent figures, Australia, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Philippines and Vietnam all appears to be spending more on military capabilities. Given the destructive nature of current military technologies, it is obvious that we should take any signs of an Asia-Pacific wide military competition seriously. However, I believe that we should stay focused on the equally important challenge of creating and nurturing frameworks to manage security issues. And back home, several candidates have been elected unopposed to the Rajya Sabha after the process of withdrawal of nominations came to an end on Friday. Union Minister Piyush Goyal, former Union Ministers P. Chidambaram and Praful Patel and Shiv Sena's Sanjay Raut were elected unopposed from Maharashtra. From Bihar, JDU leader Sharad Yadav, Supreme Court lawyer Ram Jait Malani and RGD chief Lalu Prasad's daughter Misa Bharti were among the five candidates declared elected unopposed to the upper house of parliament. While Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu was elected unanimously from Andhra Pradesh, from Tamil Nadu, four nominees of the ruling AIA DMK and two candidates of the DMK were also elected. However, polling for candidates from Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh will now take place on the 11th of June. Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that the government will appoint 10,000 new LPG distributors this year to extend the reach of clean fuel across the country by 2018. About 2,000 agencies are already in the process of being appointed and the remaining would be completed in the next two phases. At present, there are 27 crore LPG subscribers in the country, of which 16.5 crore are active. SC, ST, OBC, physical handicap, sports quota, a servicemen quota, general, this is all vertical, 33% of the Mahirao's name. And on to the other big national story. Mathura remains on the edge even two days after violent clashes claimed 24 lives, including that of the city SP and an SHO. As many as 368 people have been arrested, but the four main accused who unleashed violence on the police personnel are still absconding. UP Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav has admitted to some lapses on part of the administration and also the intelligence network that led to the incident. But questions now remain over how the sect accumulated the huge tranche of weapons without causing any suspicion. An uneasy calm prevails in Mathura. Nearly 48 hours after a violent mob ambushed a group of policemen tasked with evicting people squatting on government land in the Jawahar Bagh area. The anti-encroachment drive led to violent clashes on Thursday, leading to the death of 24 people, including city SP Mukul Duvedi and station house officer Farah Santosh Yadav. Over 360 people have been arrested and a large cache of arms and ammunition recovered from the site of clashes. The accused will now be booked under the stringent National Security Act. The four main accused, however, are still on the run. Kulmilakar Bais Upadravi Jan Gavachuke hai Jinme se Gyara Aang me Julaskar Mare hai Waag Junone Hudlagaiti Jo Logi Raftar Uwe hai Unke Vudu NSA Lagane Kilie कार्रवाई की जाएगी विशेष रूप से ऐसे लोग जो इस इस पूरे जो इलीगल एक्टिविटी थी और अराजक तत्व थे और पूरा अराजकता फैलाना चाह रहे थे एक्स्ट्रा फोर्सेस हैव बीन रश टू मथुरा एज द सिटी रिमेंस ऑन द एज उत्तर प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर अखिलेश यादव हैज अ शॉर्ट स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन अगेंस्ट द अक्यूज्ड वाइल एडमिटिंग टू सम लैपसेस ऑन पार्ट ऑफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन जो घटना हुई उसकी जांच भी हालांकि कमिश्नर स्तर पे जांच की जाएगी और जो दोषी हैं उनके खिलाफ कानून के अंदर कार्रवाई होगी चूक भी है और मैं समझता हूं पुलिस को पूरी बातचीत और तैयारी के साथ उनसे बातचीत भी करनी थी और पुलिस पूरी तैयारी के साथ वहां जाना चाहिए था लेकिन जानकारी में नहीं था कि इतना कुछ उनके पास होगा 
The centre, meanwhile, has sought a detailed report from the UP government about the circumstances leading to the incident and also the reasons. उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार इसको इसकी जांच कराएगी और जो भी इसके लिए दोषी हैं मैं समझता हूं कि उन्हें दंडित किया जाना चाहिए मथुरा की जो घटना है और वरिष्ठ पुलिस पुलिस अधिकारी मारे जाना ये बहुत बड़ा एक चूक हुआ है और राज्य सरकार को देखना चाहिए पॉलिटिकल स्लॉग फेस्ट ओवर द इंसिडेंट आल्सो कंटिन्यूज विद लीडर्स अटैकिंग द यूपी गवर्नमेंट फॉर नेगलिजेंस तमाम वैसे वेपन्स जो जिनका कोई लाइसेंस नहीं था वो सब उनके पास वहाँ पर उपलब्ध थे मैं कहना ये चाहता हूँ कि उत्तर प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री बहुत ही संवेदनहीन गैर जिम्मेदार मुख्यमंत्री का परिचय दे रहे हैं पीपल हु हैव पब्लिकली ऑक्यूपाइड गवर्नमेंट लैंड ऑफ पनिश्ड मर्डरर्स आर ब्रॉट टू बुक एंड गवर्नमेंट ऑफ अखिलेश यादव सप्पा गवर्नमेंट विच इज फाउंड स्लीपिंग It wakes up from its slumber and takes decisive action. जबरन भूमि हड़पने जैसी घटनाओं में सलिग लोग इस तरह से पुलिस और प्रशासन के साथ पेश आएंगे ये मेरी उम्मीद से बाहर की चीज थी। मैं चाहता हूं कि दोषियों के खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई हो। The cause of worry, however, for the UP government is a backlash from the sect. They had been occupying the government land in Jawahar Bagh area for two years on the pretext of a dharna. The anti-encroachment drive by the police came after the Allahabad High Court recently ordered their eviction. With Ravindra Shuran in Mathura, Bureau Inputs, Rajya Sabha TV. And time for a short break here on Breakfast News. Lots more coming up on the other side. Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. You're watching Constitutionally Yours. There is still uh, control of executive in appointing the judges. Appointing the judges, it's uh, a matter of giving justice to the people. Why the justice is being delayed? Why unnecessary litigation? So why there is delay in the appointment of judges? Two minds meet. Communication gap is over. I think things will move very smoothly and very quickly. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the Constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. Now, prohibitory orders are in place in several places in Haryana ahead of the proposed jot stir. Remember, the Jat community is demanding reservation in educational institutions and government jobs. The Jat leaders have assured the state government that the protest this time will be peaceful. The administration says it is fully prepared to not allow a repeat of the February violence. Prohibitory orders have been imposed in seven districts of Haryana ahead of the proposed agitation by Jats seeking reservation. The protests are slated to begin on June 5 in 15 districts. The call for protests has been given out of the Punjab and Haryana High Court state the government move to provide reservation under the other backward caste category. Panch Tarik se jo prasthavit agitation hai, usme lagbhag 15 points pe dharna dene ki baat ki ja rahi hai. Aur prashasan ne kisi bhi prakar ki apriya ghatna ko rokne ke liye vyapak tayariyan kar li hain. हमने अभी तक लगभग 48 पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस की कंपनियां जिसमें आरएएफ, सीआरपीएफ, बीएसएफ, आईटीबीपी उनको अलग-अलग सेंसिटिव जगह पे डिप्लॉय कर दिया है इसके अलावा 15 कंपनियां हमने और रिक्वेस्ट की है कमेट ऑफ इंडिया से और वो भी शीघ्र हमें मिलने वाली हैं तो उनको भी अलग-अलग जगह पे हम डिप्लॉय करने जा रहे हैं इसके अलावा जितने भी लीडर्स हैं हमने उनसे अनुरोध किया है कि कानून व्यवस्था बनाने में सरकार का सहयोग करें the prohibitory orders have been issued for 60 days. Cyber cell of the police is monitoring messages in the social media. In Hisar, police booked an unidentified person under charges of sedition and other offences for spreading rumour about the proposed stir. Kha panchayats have opted out of the proposed agitation. Jat community leaders have assured the state government they will maintain peace. All the Jat leaders have said that 
आने वाले अगले डेट तक जुलाई बाईस तक इसको डेफर करेंगे और बाद में भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को कोऑपरेट करेंगे और पिछले बार जो जाट आंदोलन हुआ था उसमें यही लोग आके हमें बोले थे कि हमें चार पांच जगह दे दीजिएगा वहीं पे हम बैठ के धरना करेंगे और कहीं और होगा तो ये इन उपद्रवी कार्यों को हम खुद ही मैनेज करेंगे इसी तरीके से हुआ पिछले बार भी इसलिए गुड़गांव में बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम हुए नहीं थे द हरियाणा पुलिस हेज कैंसल लीव ऑफ ऑल इट्स पर्सनल एक्सेप्ट इन एमरजेंसी केसेज आंदोलन सरकार पे भरोसा था सरकार ने भी उनसे कहा है कि सरकार कानूनी लड़ाई चूंकि लड़ाई कानूनी है सरकार के हाथ में नहीं है उसमें थोड़ा समय लगेगा सरकार ने जल्दी अपील के लिए डाली है छह तारीख लगी भी एयरिंग में थर्टी पीपल विल्ड इन प्रॉपर्टीज हंड्रेड ऑफ क्रोर्स ऑफ रुपीज डिस्ट्रॉयड ड्यूरिंग द फेब्रुवरी कोटा एजुटेशन बाय जॉर्ज ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी And news now from Jammu and Kashmir. Three BSF personnel were killed and four others critically injured when terrorists ambushed their convoy near Bij Bihara on the Srinagar Jammu National Highway. The incident took place around 4:30 p.m. Friday evening near a government hospital about 50 kilometers from Srinagar. The BSF convoy comprising 23 vehicles was coming from Jammu to Srinagar ferrying jawans who were returning to join their duties after their leave. BSF Director General K K Sharma rushed to the spot soon after the mishap to take stock of the situation. Additional forces were also rushed to the area, which was immediately cordoned off by CRPF and Rashtriya Rifles. So far, no terrorist group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but the security establishment believes it could be the handiwork of the banned Hezbollah Mujahideen group. The attack comes barely 10 days after the Hezbollah Mujahideen had killed three policemen in two separate incidents in Srinagar city. They had then also threatened to carry out similar attacks in and around Srinagar. And shifting focus now to some international news. The river Seine in France continued to rise on Friday after bursting its banks in several places earlier this week. Now this forced officials in Paris to erect emergency barriers and also close down metro stations as well as world popular museums. The flooded river scene in Paris rose 6 meters above its normal level on Friday after bursting its banks in several places earlier this week. It's now flowing at over 30 year high levels. Paris's world famous Louvre and Orsay museums were forced to shut down in order to move priceless artworks to safety. D'ailleurs la semaine dernière on pouvait se promener sur les berges, c'était très agréable il y avait un peu de soleil et tout et aujourd'hui euh, c'est inondé c'est c'est impressionnant comment ça peut changer en une semaine une fois les œuvres en ce qui concerne le Louvre ne sont pas aujourd'hui en danger mais il fallait mobiliser les personnels pour pouvoir déplacer les réserves pour pouvoir euh, en fait simplement mettre en œuvre ce plan de prévention qui avait été bien défini et préparé et qui se déroule While the flood is unlikely to submerge the city center residents living near the scene were urged to clean their basements More than 20,000 people have been evacuated in France since the weekend and around 19,000 homes are without power. People could be seen coming together to help those stranded. Soldiers and Red Cross volunteers also helped in moving people from their homes in boats. Or on essaye d'aider les gens pour rentrer chez eux, pour les personnes âgées. Là, pas longtemps, on a livré le repas pour les personnes âgées. Euh, parce qu'ils sont bloqués car c'est très émouvant, c'est très triste, c'est désolant qu'on puisse pas empêcher ça dans une ville comme Paris et ça met beaucoup de gens dans. dans... French Environment Minister Ségolène Royal said the Seine's water level continued to rise slowly, but that high waters elsewhere in France had started to recede. At least two people have died in the flood so far. More bodies are likely to be recovered as waters recede. De, de baisse déjà du niveau, euh, mais que c'était lent. C'était lent, mais bon, l'espoir euh, revenait quand même. La confiance des habitants euh, était déjà un peu plus positive parce qu'ils voyaient justement la décrue, euh, la décrue euh, s'amorcer. Even as the scene flooded higher, it remained well below the record high of 8.6 meters reached in 1910, when thousands of Parisians had to flee flooded low-lying areas of the city. flood waters may still take several weeks to recede after the wettest may in france for 100 years bureau report rajya sabha tv
Now a look at all the other developments from around the globe in this quick world wrap. Iraqi security forces on Fallujah's southern outskirts halted offensive operations against the Islamic State amid fears for the safety of 50,000 civilians being used as human shields over the dilemma of how to protect and evacuate men, women and children trapped inside. Iraqi units have been ordered not to breach Islamic State lines. The United Nations believes at least 50,000 civilians are trapped inside the city, but aid workers say that the number could be double than that. Three of the 11 candidates vying to be the next Secretary General of the United Nations were quizzed by the members of the public in London ahead of the Security Council's first informal straw poll in July. Extremism, climate change, humanitarian aid and gender equality were some of the issues that were discussed. For 70 years, the UN Security Council has met behind closed doors to choose the eight Secretary Generals, though for the first time, candidates were publicly nominated. The current UN Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon steps down at the end of the year after two five-year terms. At least six civilians were killed and dozens were injured in strikes that hit a crowded market in Thais province of Yemen. The strike is believed to be conducted by the Houthi rebels. According to the locals, other areas including Gamal Street and areas in downtown were also attacked by Houthi forces, leading to injuries to two civilians. It's also believed that the rocket was fired from an area controlled by the Houthi rebels. A Union Pacific train carrying crude oil derailed and caught fire outside Portland, Oregon on Friday, forcing the closure of an interstate highway and evacuation of a school nearby. Allegedly, oil was released from at least one rail car, which was burning. State transportation and local fire officials said there were no immediate reports of injuries and that the damage had been confined to only the railroad. Well, legendary boxer Muhammad Ali is no more. He was 74 years old and was in hospital for the past few days, undergoing treatment for respiratory complications. He had been battling Parkinson's disease for the last 32 years. Ali was three-time world heavyweight champion boxer. Born Cassius Clay on the 17th of January 1942 in Kentucky in the United States, Ali started boxing when he was only 12 years old. He won the Golden Gloves titles before heading to the 1960 Olympics in Rome, where he won a gold medal as a light heavyweight. He then turned professional shortly afterward and rose to becoming one of the greatest boxers of all times. And to some other sporting action, top seeds Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray will meet in a Grand Slam title clash for a seventh time on Sunday, while Serena Williams remains on course to win a 22nd Grand Slam with a title clash against Garbine Muguruza. Some cheer for India as well, as Leander Pace and Martina Hingis wrote their names in the record books with victory in the Roland Garro mixed doubles final to complete their career slam. Just the match, Djokovic. Here he is again on the red clay for the fourth time in five years. Novak Djokovic is just one victory away from completing his collection of Grand Slam singles trophies. He put himself back in position to dream big with a complete and commanding 6-2, 6-1, 6-4 victory over the next generation threat Dominic Thiem in the semi-finals on Friday. On Sunday, the top-seeded Djokovic will now face number two Andy Murray in what seems an appropriately rigorous final exam as Djokovic tries to finish off his 12-year Roland Garro apprenticeship. The best performance of the tournament, um, as I was hoping, you know, he's a fighter. He's, he's, uh, has improved so much on, on the clay court um, over the years and, uh, I mean, this season is, uh, is a great example of that. So. Uh, I'm sure that uh, it's going to be a, a final with uh, with with a lot of a lot of emotions and a lot of exchanges from the baseline because we have a similar styles um, of game. Murray, long at his best on faster surfaces, is the only man other than Roger Federer to have beaten Djokovic more than once in the past two seasons. 
Murray already has made tennis history of his own in this waterlogged tournament, becoming the first British man since Bunny Austin in 1937 to reach the singles final at Roland Garros. The Scot got there with one of his finer performances, a 6-4-6-2-4-6-6-2 semi-final victory over Stan Bobrinka, the number three seed and defending champion. Obviously, very big match for both of us. I mean, Novak trying to win the, the career slam, um, you know, is obviously a, a huge match for him and, and me trying to win my first French Open as well. And, um, you know, neither of us know how many more chances we'll have to, to win here. In the women's draw, Serena Williams kept alive her hopes of making Grand Slam history in Paris on Friday, but she was again well below her best. In a 7-6, 6-4 French Open semi-final win over Kiki Burton's. For the second straight day, the 34-year-old American looked out of sorts and at times exasperated before finally clawing her way back to stay alive. I don't think my mindset is any different. I, obviously, I want to do well and I would like to to win tomorrow, but, you know, I think Muguruza's been playing really well. She's been playing a really aggressive game and going for her shots. And um, regardless, I think it'll be a good match. She will now play Garbine Muguruza in Saturday's final with the prize for her being a 22nd Grand Slam title, equaling the open era record set by Steffi Graf in Paris in 1999. The fourth seeded Spaniard underlined her fine form with a 6 2 6 4 win over Australia's Samantha Stossa. Well, I've learned a lot how to control my emotions uh, in the court, outside the court. I think it's very important because sometimes it's, it's not good to, to show them or, or not controlling them. Well, about Serena, mm, very powerful game, obviously. Um, very dominating um, type of game. For Indian fans, Leander Pace completed a career slam in mixed doubles with Swiss partner Martina Hingis with a hard-fought win over compatriot Sanya Mirza and Ivan Dodrig in Paris. The unseeded Indo-Swiss pair squeezed out a 4-6, 6-4, 10-8 win over the second seeds in the summit clash that lasted 1 hour and 28 minutes. By winning the French Open, the duo completed their career mixed doubles slams. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's it from us at the moment, but you can catch all the live updates and detailed analysis on our website, www.rajasabhatv.com.